the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. This is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. You're right, Joe. Great way to start the show. Skid Row, I remember you. 92-1 City, Winnipeg's rock station. Philly Joe and Kirby on a Wednesday, 6-11. Good morning. Don't forget, uh, we have a shot at $10,000 coming up at 6.30 and a brand new clue for you, too, that might, might just be what puts it over the edge and gets a winner. It's a biggie. It's a biggie. How exciting. I looked at the clue in the old email this morning, and I was like, "I, I actual conversation off air. Ooh, that's a biggie. Yeah. So 6.30 this morning, that clue. Anybody out there that says PJK does not have a clue is wrong. We do, and it's coming up at 6.30. (laughs) Um, I I went to bed last night thinking there was a chance I'd see some snow on the ground this morning when I woke up. A little bit. We were supposed to get a little bit more snow overnight from what I read on uh, the Weather Network before I went to bed. Um, but it, it, it didn't materialize, still a little too mild out there for any accumulation within the city anyway. My knee, the weather knee told you, two centimeters last night, and mm-hmm. I think that was about right. I think that's what we ended up with because now it's all that rain mixed with snow. Mm-hmm. So, and the ground is yeah. still warm. Mm-hmm. So uh, the roads. I was surprised at how much water was retained on the streets because hydroplaning was a bigger issue than uh, any uh, any slippery conditions inside the city. Yeah, those ruts yeah. that uh, yeah, that's where you have that accumulation. It's easy to lose control a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so take it easy on your way in. Are we going to see accumulation this morning then, or no? Is it no, just they're too just mild? no. The most you're going to see in the city anyway could be could be up to they were calling for two to five centimeters again today. I think it'll stick around though. The two to five we see today. Okay. More expected on Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. Snow. So, but okay. the temperatures are cool enough now that uh, it might uh, it might be sticking around. Ultimately, it's good news for the drive-in this morning that we didn't see any snow stick around within the city overnight. I mean, you wake well up said. this morning, and uh, it really was a pretty good drive-in for all of us. I think. Yeah, when I was leaving the Jets game last night, I kind of figured that that would be the case. That it was just kind of wet. Mm-hmm. There's well, really, nothing sticking to. The ground. When I left the house and I park in the garage, one of the kids' cars started to have some kind of accumulation on it. You park outside curbs. Mm-hmm. You do too, don't you, Phil? No accumulation on the truck this morning. For you? None. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we had some in Charleswood. How about you, curbs? You're in the middle. Nothing in St. B, but I see on the Boston Pizza text line that somebody had a white yard southeast oh, of Winnipeg. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I get it. There's some areas that definitely... Uh, yeah, we had some in Charleswood. Oh, I'll see you now. Treehearn. Six inches and still coming down. Yes, that's why we always preface it with within the city. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then really the southwest part of Manitoba, that's the big reports. Like they got uh, bad visibility, street closures, highway closures yesterday, a mm. couple of school closures. But Darren yeah. says nothing in Garden City so far. So, look, we don't have windows here in the brand new studio. So let us know what you're seeing out there throughout the morning, whether it's in city, outside the city. We love to be kept up to date. Yeah. Sorry, Cribs, you were I thought you had something. No, I was just agreeing with you. The poor girl, I'm telling you. She's out of it today. Yeah, she's tired. And I'll tell you what, no, but Curbs is usually like a energizer bunny around here. And when I you walked in, I swear to God, I thought like you went on a bender. I even asked you, I said (laughs) and you go, No, I barely drank. (laughs) But you're just not used to that uh, oh oh, and you left at the end of the game last night. Like uh, like I it was like out past my bedtime times two last night. But you know what? The Jets game was super exciting. I'm so glad I stayed for every last second of it. Mm. I'm telling you, her eyes are barely open. I'm yeah. not joking. It, I, well, I, I fell like... asleep with my contacts in, which didn't Oh, oh that's well. nasty. Yeah, yeah. And it, like, peeling those things off uh, in the morning is like... I gotta ooh. tell you, I hated wearing contacts back in the day. Not a fan. Yeah. And you got the... <laughs> Uh, eyelashes too. <laughs> the poor, the poor people sitting in front of you at the Jets game probably kept getting tapped on the top of their head, thinking <laughs> you were doing it with your hand, but it was your eyelashes. <laughs> Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Call the Bone Phone seven eight zero Bone. Brought to you by Auto Gallery of Winnipeg. Hey guys, Barbarino here. Got back from Great Cup on uh, Monday night. Yeah, I uh, should have listened to my aunt because uh, I didn't really care or have a game plan like as to how I was gonna get back, like when. Or we talked about whatever. That. Well, I knew I was. I thought I was gonna use my air miles. Apparently, no. You gotta have to give them notice. So I, I couldn't use air miles. So did a direct flight back, 
from mm-hmm. Winnipeg, uh, Vancouver, uh, 744 bucks. All the bomber cheer team was around me. Oh. Saw that Muamba guy in a store at the uh, worth every penny at the Vancouver airport. And uh, oh yeah, and I passed by Dave Dickinson uh, at uh, at the BC place in the concourse. And um, hey, uh, Joe, uh, my buddy Phil out there, I was staying with him in Burnaby, Phil Franchuski. He knows you from uh, Night Moves and <laughs> yep. Club Soda. Of course he does. So Phil, he's Phil. Hi, and uh, he's living out in Burnaby now. Yeah, it's pretty fun <laughs> experience, like, I, you know, aside from the loss. But hey, man, you know, whatever. It's all good. Uh, it's always next year, I guess. <laughs> Go Blue. Go Jets. That's filthy Phil. Yeah. Great Joe. bartender from the past, <laughs> former Winnipeg. I didn't know he was living out in BC still. Of course somebody would run into someone hey. that knows you from back in the day. In Burnaby. Let me tell you something. <laughs> we don't know Barbarino personally, but let me just say something yeah. about Barbarino. Comes back from a bomber loss, gets out there very emotional as he left, and we said he just had no plan to come back. That's the Winnipeg way. <laughs> Yet he could have jumped on a boxcar, you know, like a train, and, and made his way home like many others have. But he paid for the flight to get back, 744, and found nothing but positives. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's f- true. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yes. come back. Hey, we'll do it next year. And and the, yeah. thank God for Barbarina. You can save money. The Grey Cup is here mm. in 2025. He's got a great attitude. Yeah. yeah. Loved it. Say hi to Phil for me. <laughs> the other Phil. The other Phil in my life. Uh, we had a few people on the Boston Pizza text line saying, hey, can't wait to hear what Vinny has to say now that the Jets picked mm-hmm. up a big win last night. Yeah, so the Jets, they uh, had a <laughs> test. They got tested by the best team in hockey, Florida Panthers. Well, they're not the best team anymore. The Jets proved it. I really thought they might lose because they, the first game they played against Florida, they, they played like a bunch of bozos. They just played like the old Jets. You know, they just didn't do a good job. So they surprised me. They played extremely good. Like they barely made any mistakes. So the Jets are looking different this year. They're like a really different team compared to all the years I've been watching them. They're not. Florida is not the best team anymore. They, it's the Winnipeg Jets right now are the best team in hockey. So it takes me a little longer to give the Jets 100. percent Like right now, they're maybe at 55. percent Well, there's still a lot of hockey to go. Yeah. If they could get halfway through, and they're still playing good, then I'm on board 100 percent with the Jets. So keep it up, boys. Don't mess up. So I'll be watching you. Mm, well, I'll be watching okay. the highlights. All he right. just does the highlights. I don't know. I'm starting to wonder now if he has the full Rogers Xfinity cable package <laughs> or NHL center ice because he's probably trying to write some of that off as a hockey consultant. Does Dr. Hockey putting that on your CRAA forms? We're trying Occupation, to get him. Dr. Hockey. Right. We're trying to get him on Sportsnet with uh, BX. Uh, and the oh bottle. Yeah, well, if they don't need to go to Bissonette when BX is missing, <laughs> you could go to Dr. Hockey. I dare to say it was pretty cool. There was a couple of things last night like where they were like overrated. Mm-hmm, to the Panthers. Yeah, because yeah. obviously them, you know. Yeah, the chance. Yeah, and then the return of Pomo and mm-hmm. uh, Nate Schmidt. Yeah, yeah, Schmidt got a nice uh, response from the yeah. crowd, too. And so Pomo, people love Pomo, oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I waved at him. Good. Good. Did he wave back? Uh, I don't think he saw me up there oh. in the 300s. Mm. Yeah. You were up in the 300s? Yeah. Wow. I, I, wanted, I was just there to party, okay? Excellent. Cheap ticket. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I fully understand <laughs> hey, how... Hey, 300s are good seats, too. Uh, yeah, man. yeah, there's some good but seats But I was like, there. hi, Pomo! Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. we did get a response for Vinny, though. Not everybody's ready to let him back into Jets fandom. Hey, Vinny, 15 and 2, and you're jumping off the bandwagon, or 15 and 3? <laughs> Now they're 16 and 3, and you're back on. You're not invited. Can't come back. Sorry, pal. And uh, can we all agree that we should ban reverse hitting? Such a dangerous play. Mm, the reverse body check. To me, it looks like interference whenever you see it. And there's that debate rages on. I do want to say this about Vinny, if I could just backtrack for a second. He's a tough uh, marker. Like, I hate to have him as a teacher. 55% and the record as they, that's a D plus, I think, or maybe just still a D. I don't There's even a think, lot of season to go, oh, like you said. Oh, you no, know? I know, like, but uh, at this start, you can't give him a D. <laughs> Uh, switching from sports to food. We love talking food on the show. Hey, guys, how you doing? This is Rob Felicione calling, better known as the plumber dude. Uh, I was just listening to your podcast, uh, episode 11 and 12, where you guys were doing the taste test with the cheddar cheese and the peanut butter. A friend of mine put me on to something. It's toasted peanut butter and bacon sandwich. 
I've tried it a few times. I'd, I'd make myself bacon and eggs, toast, bacon and eggs, and then I would leave a slice of, of toast and smeared it with peanut butter and filled it up with the leftover bacon. Mm. It's addictive, let me tell you. Have yourselves a great day, guys. Keep up the good work. Mm. I could see it, like the saltiness of the bacon, not that I eat it, but... Uh, the sweetness of the peanut butter. And the sweetness of the peanut butter, yeah. I love peanut butter. I wouldn't normally eat peanut butter and bacon together, but with how much I like both of those products, why wouldn't I try them together? But it makes total sense how uh, how it all happened for mm. him, right? You know, that extra piece of toast, and you go, well, <laughs> what am I going to do with this bacon right here? Like, you know what I mean? I could just see the process going, that bacon's not going to go far. <laughs> Stay naked. It's like no food left behind. Nothing. Let's find a way to eat it. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. Who the hell is that? Well, good morning, Mr. Dave. Morning. Daver. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> no one calls him I Daver. saw you at the game last night, Kirby. Oh. Ah. Did you? How you're, come you didn't say yeah, hi? Yeah, you're it over. Because uh, I'm sure you get enough people bothering you in public. Ah, mm. well, it's the purple hair that sticks out, I'm sure. <laughs> Nobody called you yeah. Daver last night at the game, did they? I would have. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Not a common nickname for Dave. Dave O. Dave O. Dave O. Davey. Davey. No, but Joe. Joe may know me as Big Red. <laughs> hey, Big Red. Of course, Joe knows you. <laughs> Big like. Red, I'm wishing you the best of luck today. Okay. That's I all I'm saying. I didn't win the grand at the uh, at the Canucks dinner, so. Okay. Oh, oh was that an event you were emceeing? I was emceeing the mm. Junior Canucks uh, dinner, and they do the elimination draw. Phil would be f- familiar with because most of these hockey dinners, they have a $1,000 win. But, uh, yeah, Big Red was one of our 10 finalists. Okay. Dave, enough of the chit-chat, enough of the small talk. <laughs> it's time to try and win $10,000. Have you been playing along, following closely, as Joe would ask? Did the clue help this I morning? Have. Uh, I thought I knew who it was, and I thought they were an athlete within two weeks ago. So, oh, oh. okay. Yeah. Should we play? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's start by playing you the audio, the three voices, one final time before your guess. Okay, Dave. Yeah. Winnipeg's Rock Station. Okay, Joe, take it away. Yeah, voice number one, Dave. Taylor Swift. Yes. Voice number two, the only one left in question. Mark Messier. And voice number three. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. For $10,000 is voice number two. Mark Messier. Mark Messier is celebrity voice number two. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, Daver. I've been watching a lot of the uh, hockey on Prime and things like that, and I heard his voice when he was on there, and it just kind of all clicked together. Wow. Tell me you're shaking right now, Dave. You sound pretty calm. You got $10,000 in your jeans. Oh, I was shaking the second I saw your phone number pop up. <laughs> I could tell that you were, like, focused. Like, you, you were just, like, to the point, you know. There was a bit of, you know, confidence there, but you didn't want to be too sure. Well, I was just hoping my dogs weren't going to start barking in the background, <laughs> but they just... Uh... Well, they're in for some treats. $10,000 is coming your way, Dave. Dave, I have to ask, any of the clues, yeah. is any of the clues that just put it over the top for you before you knew it was the moose, Mark Messier? Uh you know, it was when you said they were Canadian, and I started Googling, and then you said awards. And I know a lot of people were probably thinking Grammys and probably, like, TV yeah. awards and yeah. things like that. Uh-huh. And I went the opposite direction because it didn't specifically say that kind of stuff, and I went towards an athlete. Right. I think the next clue would have been, you know, something regarding Lay's chips and not being able to have just one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I remember it. I'm sweating. Is there anything, Dave, that you that you have the money earmarked for? I mean, uh, where could the money? Where's the money gonna go? 
Uh, I got some renovation projects and things around the house, and we're going on vacation. I'm going to Newfoundland next week, so maybe I'll have a beer. Nice. Yeah, yeah, fun place to spend uh, some of your money. Good on you, man. Congratulations. Right on. Thank you guys for calling. Ten thousand dollars is now in the possession of Dave. With who the hell is that? Hang on the line, my friend. You are the grand prize winner. This yes. is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. It is warm in here. Like, let me just, uh, we, we got, you know, I'll say this, progress, though. We had an engineer. Did you know that guy who came in? I've never met him. I don't, but he's the new hero around here. Well, when I find I, out his name, I'm getting him a plaque. <laughs> you get, invite him to Christmas dinner, honestly. Well, a little better yet, I'll get to get him his own parking spot right up front. You should have told him name. that. Because we didn't, cause, so we're in a new building. Uh, here on Skirfield, moved from our old digs in Osborne Village. So we're still getting to know all the people. And uh, so far we know Bar- Barb, the cleaning lady, she's fabulous. Yep. Um, of course, we know all the staff that made the move with us, Riley, our head engineer. But that dude who came in here, he was looking at the thermostat. He didn't introduce himself, but he uh, identified himself as uh, as an engineer or some kind of... Yeah, he didn't identify himself. Uh, <laughs> I went right into the question about uh, the temperature. Because I realized it's set at 19 degrees, but I'm going, what the heck's the top number at 24 uh, something, right? Point something. And he he said he was basically saying that he's answered this question a few times today, and that's what they're working on. You could tell right away there was going to be no more to the question because he's been tired of answering it, and it was going to be... He listen, deferred. He deferred yeah, he quick. Deferred. He goes, that way. project manager, project manager. Like, this is a big deal. Um, so we're, we're going right to the top on this, and all they're trying to do is adjust the temperature to get the air movement going so he can go on to another job. That's the look that's, I got. It and, is. And okay. the and the tone. Nice guy, though. You're very nice. Yeah. yeah. There was a point, and I was not even going to be dramatic, but like, I honestly thought I was going to throw up because have you ever got like so overheated <laughs> that Joe, you started feeling ill? This, like, I was ill. This is the best part. It's November, and two weeks ago, you were wearing sandals. And well, yes, and, and and dressing for a tropical vacation. And yesterday, here. you were, and Phil thought it was a negligee. I thought it was a blouse that you were going to a nightclub blouse. Yeah. Last night, <laughs> and yeah, no more, to lingerie. Work. no more was, lingerie at the office. Top. I don't and, know what that was. And a pleather jacket, and and complaining about how hot it was. I mean, I thought you were an Olympic wrestler trying to cut weight for the Olympics. It was so hot here, and you're wearing all this clothing. I said maybe start with taking the jacket off and see what and then that does. And Phil says, "Whoa, yeah, well, what yeah. You wear that bed." I'm like, it's not my anniversary, and you're not my wife. What yeah. are you wearing? It was literally a tank I was top. ready to get the cucumber slices for your eyes, like you were ready to lay out. What was that old lingerie store that was in the mall? Victoria's what? Secret. There, Victoria's Secret. There was another Long one. V Rose. Uh, maybe. It was How a do I even time. know the names? It's of these been players. years since Northern I went by. Northern Reflections. <laughs> yeah. Roots. <laughs> you guys sell lingerie. Uh, no, anyway, we sell it's sweatpants and hoodies. Hot. It, it, it's It's very warm in this studio. And it's a problem with the new studio. They're working on it. And it was nice to see that oh, gentleman come in here this morning. Not a problem if you enjoy it at 24.9 <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a small room the size of a master bedroom. <laughs> well, Kirby's wearing lingerie in here and feels like she's going to barf. So that's the good news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she didn't want to get dramatic, but no, she thought she'd tell you the story anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's PJK Extra. Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Oh wow! Okay, I'm giddy. I'm giddy. I'm still shaking. That's uh, it, you know what's going to happen eventually. Um, yeah. but you, nothing. I mean, I don't want to get too deep here, but nothing prepares you for it. You're giving you're giving away ten thousand dollars. It's a pretty sweet moment. Um, and congratulations to Dave. What a beauty. Well, it's all live, and, and sometimes you get the real raw emotion once we start taking the information down so Dave can get his uh, big fat check for ten grand. But Dave was telling us off the air not just about renovations, but he's trying to start a family, and uh, and he's got a couple of trips planned. I mean, uh, you know, ten grand can go uh, and help out any of those causes. So good ba- on him. Nice guy. He basically told us how... Uh how bad he needs the money. Yeah. <laughs> so. Which is, is always fitting. Uh, somebody on the text line also said, you know, like, is there another game that starts today? Like, 
of who the hell is that. And and unfortunately, I know we're very excited, but I'm kind of sad because it's done now for a little while. Right, and I, you might have heard, next chance to play, 4.30. I plug that in regardless, just in yeah. case we get a wrong yeah. answer, and I forgot. That's in the okay. excitement, I forgot to delete it, so no, there's... There won't be, we'll rerun it. We're going to, like, you'll hear it again. What a run, though, this oh, time man. around, you know, like, to get that that second voice. And there's a lot of people that it seemed to have, you know, nailed it in their minds. Like, they had Marc Messier as the, uh, as the name that they were going to go with if they got the call. So this goes on hold for a bit, but there's something new coming. It's just around the corner, too, from what we were hearing last week here. So oh, yeah. there's a new contest coming up. Are we allowed to say what it is? Nope, because nope. I can't. Uh, Joe gets can't in trouble tell you. already enough yeah. for, for. I'm staying away from that right now because yeah. it won't. I I don't know enough of the details. Yeah. That I would want to present it right now. I think we've ha- we've done it before yes. though. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Let me but just. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun, and people can win some cash. Let me just hit the three voices now that we know what yeah. the three voices are, and maybe you'll hear it more now that we know. So here. Winnipeg's rock station. So again. Okay. Winnipeg's rock station. I'll tell you what, Kirby it's nailed tough. Taylor Swift like in our first Boom. meeting. Yep. If you want to uh, look behind the curtain here, but I'll tell you, I had no idea this contest. I love because uh, I I didn't know any of the voices. Mm-hmm. No, so you had either. an inkling, didn't you? On uh, on, on, on Messier. Yeah. So yeah. it's Taylor yeah. Swift, Mark Mark Messi, and Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I found the middle one the hardest for myself too, but uh, Taylor Swift. Man. I that once. Once I knew it was her, it was obvious. It sticks out. And it was the first. Yeah. I think that went the first or second day. Yeah. It was pretty no, quick. First week. Yeah. Yeah. First week. yeah. Okay. Anyway, and now that you know it's Messier, it's it's right there. But he's not a, I don't know. It's it's just for some reason it didn't uh, it didn't dawn on a lot of people. Well, if you don't watch uh, hockey uh, right now, that's where you're going to see him the most, right? At, uh, at the desk, like Dave said. He's heard him on some of the broadcasts and mm. it kind of clicked in. Yeah. I truly only remember the guy, and I know he's a hockey player. I just didn't watch a lot of hockey, obviously, but from that Lay's commercial. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that no, is for sure. Such a prolific commercial ingrained in my memory. One Listen, of the, greats. the only hockey player that's ingrained in your memory is the one you dated many, many years ago in high school. Can you still remember his voice? We assure no. you. We assure you, Ben Scribbins will never be a part of who the hell is that? <laughs> are you, are oh you sure? <laughs> The Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. Okay, would you rather, Kirby, speaking of food, and this one's going to be great for Joe, would you rather eat only Brussels sprouts or only turnips for the rest of your life, every single meal? Brussels sprouts or turnips? I feel like you could do a lot more with turnips than you could with Brussels sprouts. And honestly, you would not smell very good if you consumed only Brussels sprouts. So (laughs) help me with this. uh, uh, Turnips... You met my dad. I think used to mash those up. They're like a type of potato. Like, okay, they're similar. Like it's a starch. I would. I agree with you 100. percent Kirby, uh, it's turnips all the way because uh, Brussels sprouts. You can't have those every day. Hmm. Like I mean, <laughs> no one. You, well, unless you have no friends or one, no family. <laughs> like if you want to live a lonely existence, uh, uh, you would be like polluting the uh, air uh, around you. Absolutely, you'd be killing the ozone. <laughs> <laughs> I've had bacon wrapped Brussels sprouts. Those are delicious. Our carbon footprint yeah. would not be good if you were just eating Brussels sprouts. Would you rather, move it on here, Kirby, have the ability to shrink to the size of an ant or have the ability to grow to the size of a skyscraper? You know, I don't want to grow any larger than I already have at 5'10, 5'11. You know, it. I want to be smaller. But you're not. It's not permanent, though, Kirby. Just in a crunch, like you can do oh. this as you. Let's pretend you're saving somebody. Yeah. You could grow as big as you want or as little as you want. This is not permanent. It's an ability. It's like a superpower. I think I could probably get more done being small. Like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was, mm. like, one of my favorite movies movie. as, a, as a kid. And Rick like, Moranis. Yeah, I used to always think, like, oh, my gosh, could you imagine if you got shrunk? So, But you're going to go you're gonna go with shrinking. Yes. Okay, Joe? I think I'm going to stay larger uh, just for the fact that uh, ants, for example, are very hardworking. Mm-hmm. And they, they're they very powerful. <laughs> and uh, I really, every time I've seen, like, ants working at a hill, I go, I'm glad I'm not an ant. Oh, yeah. There's That's no- too much of a pace for me. I like to slow things down at this point in my life. So bigger for me would equal more lethargic. So I'm going big. 
Good one. And going home. Yeah. <laughs> go big, go home. Would you rather sing karaoke with Lady Gaga or... D- so we're talking a night out here. Karaoke with Lady Gaga or dance all night at a club with Shakira? Oh. I would 100% want to sing alongside the Lady Gaga. Yeah, this, I think this is a super easy one for Joe and I. You'll go with Gaga, Joe. I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> hips don't lie, okay? That's <laughs> all I'm saying. Okay. Hips don't lie. And I can't sing. Yeah. At least dance, I might be able to make an attempt. Well, you can dance. You know, so you've got that. I've seen you at the Christmas party. Oh, yeah. I but me, dance. I would have to go with the dancing. But can you imagine? I already am a pathetic dancer. Now you're dancing with Shakira? Yeah. Oh, An incredible dancer? I wouldn't worry about it too much. No one's going to be paying attention to you or I dancing <laughs> <laughs> while Shakira's dancing. Oh, my God. You, you know what I'm saying? to slow dance? Like- <laughs> oh, God. Can we slow it down? Oh, great. Bit? It's ladies' choice. And Shakira's going to ask who to dance with her. <laughs> okay, we'll wrap up with this one. Would you rather? So your home, this is a home invasion. Your home is being invaded. You get to the door. Would you rather be Hannibal Lecter or Kathy Bates from the Misery movie? So Ooh. her character in the, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Hannibal Lecter or Kathy Bates from Misery is standing at your door. They've broken it. Kirby? I think I'd have to go with Kathy Bates. I'm a huge fan of hers. And, like, that character... But it's not Kathy Bates that you're a huge fan of. Right. It's, it's the, the character. misery yes. character. Yes, yeah. That character that she played, though, oh, is like fan. next level. <laughs> Joe, shut up. Well, we've heard much about this since we've known you. Uh, big Kathy Bates fan. I'm just a big <laughs> fan of the character she played, especially when she used the wood block oh between God. his legs with the sledgehammer and broke his ankles. Oh, big <laughs> fan of violence. Uh, so and but, I did Her destroying that. the guy. Woo. I just, li- okay, listen, uh, I am a big fan of Stephen King. And so I thought that that would be, uh, you know, play into that answer. So you're going with Kathy Bates. Yeah. From, okay, Joe Hannibal Lecter. Well, I got to go with Hannibal Lecter, one of the scariest villains of all time, because he's just psychotic and, uh, you know, just uh, the mind screwing that was going on with him and that whole sound effect of the fava beans and the ki- nice Chianti. <laughs> I that whole like slurping you do sound. That. Well, that's why you want that at your door. No, people don't want to answer their door ever now. When just somebody's bringing a package, they wait till they leave. Now you got this guy with the mask and the trolley right at your door. What the hell is that? This this is the Philly Joe and Kirby podcast. More human than human, Kirby. All right, that's one of those songs that I yeah. can. Uh, Sing along too. It's very simple. Uh, Ninety-two one city, Winnipeg's rock station. A very festive atmosphere all of a sudden here in the studio with uh, the grand prize winner for who the hell is that? Dave Big Red Sinclair, ten thousand dollars richer. Thanks for knowing Mark Messier. That paid the bills today. Boom. Amazing. And if you, we're gonna rerun that at eight thirty this morning. Also, you can catch it on the podcast. And I am, speaking of the podcast, I am blown away that we have listeners in Singapore, Warsaw, Hong Kong, Belize, Australia. None of those places have I ever been. I haven't been really like, you know, as you guys well know, well documented on this program. Minneapolis, Edmonton, those are my, you know, highlight cities. Don't discount that because (laughs) they showed up on the map here too for the podcast and I'm putting all the, I'm putting all the credit on you. That we have people in Grand Forks, Grand Forks. listening. That's now, me. You're right, Joe. You're bringing that crowd in. I'll tell you right now, when you get down to deeper in the south like L.A., we're going to give Kirby the credit for that one. <laughs> Atlanta. Uh, just I'm because Hollywood. WestJet flies directly uh, to Atlanta now, but we also get into North Carolina. Those are some of the American hotspots listening, mm-hmm. which is great. I love that. Well, we received a, the reason we bring this up. We received a data report. From uh, our good buddy Angus, who helps us with produce the podcast, yep. does various things here, hey, including he's got he's got an on air shift here at ninety two one city. Yeah. You may hear him on the air, Angus. He's mm-hmm. just an all around great guy, and he does the podcast for us. And he sent us a data report. That's why we're talking about some of these cities that were suddenly big, like we're huge in these cities. Moose in Saskatchewan, no doubt about that. Mm, that, that yeah. <laughs> That was Once the least. we made the trip out there, that was just, you know, yep. that was expected. We were yeah. going to have that effect on that small town there. The Red Barn. Back. But I also want to give a shout out to some Manitoba towns. Mm-hmm. Because Thompson, all the way up north, Swan River, Verdon, Brandon, and Verdon, who are having their share of issues with uh, 
what was uh, coming down yesterday. Selkirk, Altona, and don't forget about Warren, Manitoba. Okay. Look at this. This is amazing. I really, I got to say. Thompson, I, I uh, lived in Thompson for a few years. That's probably why. I think that's like if we really. It resonated. Uh, let's give, you know what, let's give Daryl Aubrey some of the credit and Kathy making roots up in Thompson. Uh, you, at, at this point, were just, uh, uh, you weren't even going to nickel days in Thompson. You were too young. Just hoping to make the Thompson King Miners nine-year-old hockey team or oh, eight-year-old so hockey team. I'm going with Daryl and Kathy Aubrey on that one. <laughs> I'll call Daryl later today. He won't understand what I'm saying. He won't be able to hear me. What? Thompson. He just wants to know when the Habs game is on. That's exactly right. Philly Joe Kirby. Philly Joe and Kirby. Podcast. The Philly Joe and Kirby Podcast. Thanks for all the text messages we've been getting and phone calls pertaining to the roads. Yeah, and 511, Kirby's mentioned it in the news, but uh, it's worth mentioning again. 511 is the website you need to go to, especially outside the city. A lot of people obviously know that already, but southwestern Manitoba really got impacted yesterday. There was a lot of road closures and visibility issues. Well, up to date now, I think it's Verdon right down to the Saskatchewan border is still closed this morning, so... You can get some up-to-date information on uh, certain parts. City-wise, we got the two centimeters, I think, falling, and now it's more or less rain and wet snow Mm -hmm. until we get the snow this afternoon. But they're not calling for a ton more. It'll, you know, be a little annoying out there. Some people uh, will take a little longer to get to where they're going today. Mm -hmm. but Very little accumulation. Like, as far as Transcon, I know none. Like, uh, when I woke up this morning, I looked out the window, I'm like, oh. So much for the snow we were supposed to get overnight. Yep. And you in St. B, same thing. We heard Garden City, but you had a touch of accumulation. Yeah, we had a dusting out there that uh, you could see it on the lawn. And uh, it's probably nothing that's going to stick because the roads uh, are still pretty uh, pretty warm. Have you ever thought, Joe, in your life, and I want you to visualize this, Kirby. I think you'll, you'll be able to visualize th- this with me, of being a weatherman. Like I could see Joe in, with yep. the suit, with the sharp suit. In front of the Doppler radar, whatever those, uh, you know, on the on the TV weather where they've got the, they're pointing at different areas and they're highlighting things and they're telling you the way, like you. Mm-hmm. And like, I, you could just like work that screen like over here. Yes. We've got the low pressure system coming through, uh, the you know, this state over here into over here. Well, st- I don't know about states. But you, well, like, you got me working in the big cities in the U.S. already. <laughs> Wow. Can't even can't even work in my hometown. She's moving me out. Where am I going? Madison, Wisconsin. What happened to Aiello? Listen. I want to be a weather guy in Madison. I wasn't going there, Joe. And I'm not trying to move you out of this. No way. No, I just but see the, I see you being big time, okay? It, it, He's following twisters in Oklahoma nowadays. Weather chasing. Tornado alley. <laughs> You're live on scene. The wind is blowing. That's, it. That's just what I was hoping for this late in my no, life. No, but you've got the TV experience with the WWF when you were younger. You're good on camera. I just, I, I'm surprised at some point in your Hall of Fame career that a weatherman <laughs> offer never came your way. Because you were very, yeah. when you talk weather. I listen. Like, you're my authority okay. on the weather. Thank you very much. I'm dead serious. I think he thinks I'm being sarcastic, but I'm By totally... the luck he's giving you, yeah. It's because I tell you when it's windy out there. When <laughs> I tell you about the north wind, you listen. That's what it is. No one else tells me wind. When you you're... know why I try and do it more on a serious note is because of the amount of people that work outside. Yes. And yeah. the amount of people I know in my world that have worked outside their entire lives and we're blessed to do what we do, it's important for them to know what they're getting into every day, to be honest. And you'll, you, you've you got a couple of days off coming up, and the first thing we're going to hear about, the first thing, the first complaint Kirby's going to get is, is where, the wind. where is that wind at? Where is the, the Joe Aiello-style weather reports? You know, Joe, if you could just sit down with me before you go and we can, like, go over a few <laughs> yes. things about the wind, that would be great. I'd well, like to learn about it a bit more. <laughs> I can hardly wait <laughs> for my day off. <laughs> For more Philly Joe and Kirby, lock it into 921 City weekday mornings, 6 to 10.